We have gathered here today in the Retro Rebound room for probably our most requested video ever, which is a video game collection tour. So today we're going through every single one I got. We got a rotating tower here stuffed in the corner of the office uh, with all my PlayStation and Switch and GameCube and Game Boy Vids, all that fun stuff. We're gonna go through all that today. And guess what? We have not one but two towers to go through. So I hope you're cozy here today. And I appreciate you having interest in all the things I buy, not only for myself, but this channel. So let's get started, because again, we're gonna be here for a while. So my PS2 collection, uh, this is the biggest I have out of all of the main consoles. Um, the reason being, I have a ton of nostalgia for the PlayStation 2 growing up, like the, the PS2 Slims, like that's the system I think of when I think of my childhood from Star Wars Battlefront, all the way to Kingdom Hearts. Like these are just games I grew up on. It's my preferred choice for third party collecting as well. So you're gonna see that a lot as we're going through all this like batman vengeance is an example i adore that game i grew up playing it on the xbox technically that's the best system to play it on i got it on ps2 just because that's where all my other batman games are but also like sometimes people argue oh get it on gamecube 60 fps it's better i'm playing old games anyway man like frame rate never really mattered too much to me so I'm cool with just getting it on my PS2. It's a lot cheaper there. So that's why I collect a ton for my PS2. Whereas I have a lot more love for the original Xbox during that generation. But as we get to that second rotating tower, you're gonna just see like, I love the weird exclusives on the original Xbox. So anyway, with the PS2, I mean, the highlight reel is insanely long here. You'll see some games in my collection uh, that I don't necessarily play often or have a large attachment to like i have the avatar the last airbender games here uh some of these games are in my collection for content truthfully like i will be covering the avatar games in full when the netflix movie or show rolls around and so i thought like it's good to have them now right originally it was there for the quest for balance game but uh, we we know how that one went but yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia for the Baldur's Gate series. I talked about that in our separate retrospective. So I have Dark Alliance 1 and 2 here on my PS2. I love these games, great action RPGs. They've been ported forward. So that's where things get a little weird now collecting is there are games I have nostalgia for that I guess I don't need to own in my collection because now they're available like readily on my PS5. So or my Xbox, like why Why would I bother having them on my PS2? Uh, you'll see that as well with Destroy All Humans 1 and 2, like the remakes are fantastic and they're completely built off the original. So why would I have 1 and 2 on the PS2? I don't know, I just, I just kind of do. But yeah, you're gonna see a lot of Dragon Ball here. Uh, Dragon Ball being, of course, one of my favorite anime, if not my favorite anime next to Death Note. And so yeah, Dragon Ball for me, I just wanna have all of the Dragon Ball games. So you're gonna see a lot of them here on this shelf. Um, my favorite being right here, uh, Budokai Tenkaichi 2. Uh, I love, of course, Trunks. So having him on the cover, fantastic. But also like the open world stuff, I, I just love how this game rolls. Do not get Budokai Tenkaichi 1. That's not a, a worthwhile endeavor in my honest opinion. Um, but yeah, we have some Final Fantasy games here as well. A lot of Harry Potter games here. Truthfully, I would have probably got rid of these and donated them at some point, but uh, my fiance loves Harry Potter. I got a close friend who also really loves Harry Potter. So yeah, they're around for them, right? So that's the other thing. You gotta build your collection for your loved ones at the same time. So we've got some Harry Potter games here. Of course, we love superhero games. If you have not played these games here, uh, the Hulk games, here we have Ultimate Destruction and uh, we also have the, the uh, Ang Lee Hulk film game. And uh, I just, this one I remember playing as a kid on the original Xbox. Uh, it's still not that great, but this one here, I remember rediscovering uh, when I first started collecting back in like, I bought a PS2 again, I think 2014. And uh, Hulk Ultimate Destruction is really good. Like you can see some of Prototype in that game, which we made a dedicated video to Prototype here on the channel. The, there are some things missing here, like the Jack collection. I only have Jack 2. What? I love Jack and Daxter one through three. So yeah, there's some things missing here that I'd love to do better. That's why I'm always like donating games and cycling stuff in and out of my collection. I've become, at first I started getting everything and then eventually I had everything and you recognize what you're not playing and some people just hold on to it. For me though, it's like, I'd rather just have a collection of stuff that I've grown to love or I did love at one point. So yeah, like I, I'd probably get some games out of the shelf because once they start to get cluttered, that's when I know, all right, like what do I need to get rid of here? So I recently actually, believe it or not, just 
just went through and got rid of a ton of stuff like some of those Nicktoon games. <laughs> nope, no more. Um, yeah, you'll see here, one of my favorite games that I've never beat, <laughs> Mega Man X Command Mission. Uh, this one was one of the first games I picked up when I started collecting again in 2014. And uh, this is a turn-based RPG set in the Mega Man X world. And I, oh my God, I love this game so much. I don't know why I never beat it though. That's why I always say it's the my favorite game I never beat. I love the X series. I love turn-based RPGs. It's clearly built and inspired by Final Fantasy X, uh, but it speaks to my Mega Man sensibilities. So this is one that's always slept on. I hope Capcom brings it back one day. You're going to see actually a couple games right next to Mega Man here that I, I think personally may not uh, be the best to have on my shelf in a few years when Remini finishes the remake of both Max Payne games. But got a love, lot of love for uh, for these two. Um, I remember playing the Max Payne one demo on my original Xbox. Um, yeah, going along, there's a ton of anime games. You know, we, we cover a lot of them here on the channel. Um, Naruto being one that we have a ton of games for all the way from ultimate ninja one to five uh ultimate ninja five is a game that by the way if you're if you're going like oh i never heard of that um that's because it was only out in uh, europe as well as uh, japan um it never made its way to the us but i like having it in my collection because i love the ultimate ninja series we have uzumaki chronicles as well uh one of the most slept on uh, naruto game franchises i guess uh personally I, I adored it especially the first one um but you'll also see persona of course is in the collection uh, a good friend of mine youtuber fantastic youtuber rapidusky check him out he actually went to japan shipped me a couple of games uh, it's all versions of persona 3 on ps2 as well as persona 4 on ps2 in japanese and like the disc art is different it's it's really cool so uh, this was a great gift so naturally it's uh it's earned a spot on the the retro rebound shelf um we have games of course like sly cooper the original spider-man games from the raimi trilogy we've talked so much about spider-man you know my love here speaking of missing games ratchet and clank like i only have ratchet deadlock that's my personal favorite uh so that's one i have sitting here but i, I need to get the rest like i need to get up your arsenal i need to get going commando like i need to get a lot more ratchet and clank in my collection so like i said there's still a lot of fine tuning to do there, there's always something to collect which is kind of what i like i don't like the journey to be over i like to you know go to cons and and whatnot and just shop around and so i feel like when i go to gung-ho on like ebay i'm stripping myself of that experience of finding something going aha there it is um but yeah otherwise my ps2 shelf has a lot of ninja turtle games i do get the occasional i guess like the occasional weird game if i can make like a obscure selection here for you to check out uh this is urban rain it's from bandai and it's a kind of like 3d brawling game that was built with the tekken fighting system and this is an amazing video game. Like the combat still feels incredible. I found it on like, a, I think a Sunni legend tweet. Like he, he just posted a combo video. I was like, this looks raw, man. And I picked it up and I mean, it wasn't super cheap. It was like 40 or 50 bucks, but uh, Urban Rain is awesome. Like if you got to add a PS2 game to your collection from this video that you've never heard of, take a chance on this one. I also have uh, another series I have so much adoration for. Of course, it's Square Enix that I, I've never played much of, but I love the art for it. And that's a Valkyrie Profile. We'll talk about it a little bit more uh, when we get to the PSP section with Valkyrie Profile Lenneth. But this is Valkyrie Profile 2, so Maria. Uh, I picked this one up in Lynn in Boston um, when I was out there for uh, PAX East. And uh, this was one of those games where I saw it for a good price. And I thought, you know what? Why not? So yeah, I, I love to, my favorite thing is, is to collect just random JRPGs. So those are a couple that are found here in the collection. Otherwise, at the complete bottom um, are my PS1 games. I didn't have a PS1 growing up. I had a Nintendo 64. So I was very, very picky about what PS1 games I pick up now, especially because there's certain ones that collide with my nostalgia. Like I have the N64 card for Spider-Man 64. I don't really like Spider-Man 1 on PS1. Like it just, I, I, it doesn't connect with me as much because I miss those comic book cutscenes. So I'm very picky about what I pick up. So I have games like Parasite Eve, which is just incredible. Play that for the first time this year. We'll talk about it in a separate video. Uh, Mega Man Legends, of course, is another one that 
I, oh my God, so good. They, they say a 3D Mega Man game can't work because of a, a game in my shelf here. Uh, this one here, Mega Man X7. Uh, they say 3D Mega Man can't work because of this one. And I get it, but then you play Legends and Legends 2 and you're like, whoa, now this is actually pretty good. So yeah, I love Legends. Um, I only have one Dreamcast game in Shenmue. I, I adore the first Shenmue. Um, so yeah, the, the PS1 section is kind of barren. I have one more down here that I know is like a trying to find it here oh vagrant story yeah vagrant story is uh this jrpg that i spent way too much money on. i was like 100 bucks um spent a ton of money on it though and um i plan to do a video on it at some point because square enix catalog of like old jrpgs fascinate me so like i said my favorite thing to collect is jrpg so that's my ps1 and ps2 section now because again i'm very weird or smart depending on how you look at it i've coordinated things where you rotate you rotate things from two to three just like that ps3 is a little light because you know what i really collect for my ps3 it's a couple of things i think about first thing trophies like what is your trophy list bro that usually helps me determine a lot of my purchasing but also i like to go for collections that's my favorite thing to collect on ps3 so some examples um we have a bunch of god of war games here we have the origins collection we have the god of war remastered collection and then there's also ascension um there's the god of war saga here which is all five of the god of war games so you want to be smart when collecting these because there's so many god of war collections like just get saga and call it a day me being naturally the weird collector i am i have a lot of love for especially like the old god of war i love the new stuff on ps4 and ps5 but like old kratos like that dude's built different man some of those mini games are hilarious too so very ps2 era stuff going on there but yeah like i like to collect those types of collections i have the infamous collection here so it's infamous one and two um it also comes with the festival of blood expansion um you also have here the jack and daxter collection um and the reason i got all of these so quickly uh kill zone trilogy as well uh, this one I haven't played much of, honestly. Like, I played a lot of Killzone 3 multiplayer, a little bit of the story. I couldn't tell you much about it, but um, Killzone is something I do enjoy. Just I, I wish I played more of it. The reason I gunned for all of these different collections and trilogies and whatnot is because when PlayStation started to tear down the PS3 and Vita stores, that's when prices really started to shoot up. And I mean, these were the first games that went up. Like suddenly the Jack and Daxter collection was like $80. Suddenly the Sly collection was $80. Like it was just so much money out of nowhere. So yeah, the PS3 is like really my home for collections or games I want to trophy hunt for. Um, originally Persona 3 Ultimax, like this is a game I'm happy to have physically in the collection. Cause when I looked at eBay, like 90 bucks, um, now it's been ported. So it's definitely cheaper. Um, there are games that I have a lot of love for that I can't get the platinum for anymore, like PlayStation uh, All-Stars Battle Royale. There were rumors a while ago that PlayStation was going to make another one of these. I hope one day they do. Um, more collections on this shelf. We have the Prince of Persia trilogy, uh, which is Sands of Time, Warrior Within, uh, the Two Thrones. For me, just the ability to get trophies in these games ratchet and clank collection three full games this is ratchet and clank going commando and up your arsenal um there's just there's so many here i could keep going i think there's a resistance one as well i don't have it in my collection but i do have of course my favorite the sly collection so if you're collecting for ps3 and like you have a lot of nostalgia for the ps2 games and you love trophy collecting get all of those collections in there uh, i'm more of like a 360 guys you'll see when we get to that part of the collection i tried to keep this like all playstation oriented here um but yeah for the most part like no real weird jrpgs like i do have the tales of exilia limited edition here um i remember before i went to college for the first semester um i i was stupid like my i was trying to fix my sleep schedule and then i stayed up till 5 a.m every night the week before college and played and beat this game i put like 40 hours in, in a single week like what a dumb decision that was but i like remember the game fondly um because of it uh yeah just the ps3 to me marks that like hd re-release era you had the tales of symphonia chronicles hd re-release so uh yeah like that's kind of where i go to when it comes to the ps3 now below you're gonna see the wii selection here uh mighty thin I, you know the wii is like a weird system for me like i i don't have a ton of nostalgia for it because i remember buying it i played um twilight princess 
and I don't even have that in my collection, might I add. And then I kind of just moved on along back to my old systems. Like the Wii never really deeply resonated with me. Um, what I can say clicked with me the most uh, were the Clash of Ninja Revolution games. Clash of Ninja on the GameCube was some of my favorite. And so having that on the Wii was really good. Uh, we have Metroid Prime 3 or Metroid Prime Other N. Or no, this is just Metroid Other M. I apologize. I bought that from when I was in Canada. There's a couple of Sonic games here. Um, Mario Galaxy. Like nothing crazy but i'd say my biggest pickup here uh was the last story the last story was a game that um is from the developer mistwalker who made uh, lost odyssey which is one of my favorite jrpgs ever uh, i haven't played this one but this is also something i got actually the week i got engaged to the woman holding the camera right now um we went to a little game shop because naturally even when uh when you're getting engaged you got to take care of business and so i saw this one here uh in the collector's edition it's kind of like a, a book here it didn't come with the art book but um i still had to pick it up plan to play it one day so yeah when it comes to wii games um, don't really have the most popping collection, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Like there's no need to, to rush through all of it. So that's my, my PS3 and Wii collection. But before we actually like rotate, I, I remembered uh, this one here, Drakengard 3. This is one that honestly, I, I didn't know existed until I started looking into Nier Automata because I adore that game. And it turns out like there's an ending in this game that sets up the world of Nier Automata. So I was like, you know what? I gotta add that to the collection. I, I remember loving uh, Drakengard 1 as a kid. If I could get this back on my shelf, just too many games, man. Um, Drakengard 1 though, I have a lot of nostalgia for because that was a game that um, I picked up on a whim as a kid. You know, imagine that, just, just randomly buying that. Not like a Mario game or whatever. I randomly bought Drakengard and uh, I loved it. Like I remember like they, they took your voice away and everything. You had this relationship with the dragon. It was back when like Yoko Taro didn't make games that were super existential and weird, but uh, here we are now. Anyway, we're over to the PS4 section. My PS4 collection also pretty sizable. Um, the reason being that during the Xbox One PS4 gen, I started off on Xbox One. I committed because I said, you know what? PS4 is saying a lot, but Xbox One has the games. Um, that launch lineup was sick. We'll show you my Xbox One collection later. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought Xbox One had it out the gate. But then the, the PS4 just kept that momentum up and all my friends migrated over and I was like, well, I don't want to play games by myself, even if they're mostly single player games. And so here I am with a much larger PS4 collection. So got some interesting ones here. Like we have 13 Sentinels, I just rim, uh, never played this one, got it years ago. Actually whew, blew off some dust from the top. That's how long it's been sitting here for. It's that type of game. I, I just look at and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to play that soon. And I just, I just never do. Um, we also have really cool ones here, like I the Somnium Files. Um, I love that as well as I, I love when my uh, steelbook of Cyberpunk falls down while I'm at it. But yeah, I the Somnium Files, great visual novels if you're looking for those. Um, they also have the sequel here, still sealed, a Nirvana Initiative. Um, just never got to playing that one because as someone who reviews a ton of games, my, my biggest problem, my biggest struggle is that, oh, I need to play this versus I want to play that. And so uh, I always have to choose what's what's best for everyone, which is usually reviews. It's very, you know, it's it's often enough that I, I get to play games that I, I'm like really excited about that also happen to filter into the review process. But for the most part, um, yeah, I don't get to cover a lot of my visual novels like I would like to, but that's where this channel comes in clutch. You all like the weeby stuff with me. Yeah, we also have games I like to collect here. Like I occasionally add whatever is happening with limited run. Um, usually I'll try to pick them up at the PAX booth that they have just because, um, you know, when it comes to limited run, you gotta wait like a year plus. Um, so I don't wanna do that. So here we have Castlevania Requiem. Um, this is Symphony of the Night, Rondo of Blood. I realize I'm showing you all so many sealed games. I swear to God, I play the stuff I buy, but Limited Run is, it's one of those things where like, I, I don't, I wanna like take my time getting these games. Like Castlevania is something I wanna cover around like Halloween season, one of these years. So I'm kind of holding back on those. Also I have a ton of steel books. Um, we have Dragon Ball Fighters. We also have behind that uh, Dishonored 2. Uh, these steel books are awesome. And, and it's one of my favorite things to come out of this generation is uh, that new push forward. Cause then it was like, you know, some stores would carry their own exclusive steel books. I remember Best Buy was always popping with those. So that's why I always went to Best Buy for all my new games. Um, otherwise, 
A lot of collections, again, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, easy pick here. You want that platinum, especially because when it came to the PS3 trilogy, it was like this big booklet. Now you have it on one disc. Uh, the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, of course, got to get this one physically. If you have not played Battle Network, what are you doing? Like, please, this this series is incredible. Um, it's about Mega Man being a program and hunting down viruses on the internet. Like, it personifies the internet. Uh, it's one of our reviews that did really well on this channel. I, I could not have been more thrilled because that is like my Pokemon growing up. So I'm happy to have that on like modern consoles. Of course, we have a ton of uh, Weeby stuff. It really slept on JRPG here. Uh, Neo, the world ends with you. Uh, honestly, one of the best games that came out last year right there or two years ago man time is flying by but uh, nonetheless this game so slept on performed horribly when it came to actually you know this was 2021 because this is actually a game i used as an example of my ps5 chewing up my discs uh which we talked about here on this channel but this was 2021 um it performed horribly uh when it came to sales but it, it deserves so much better especially if you played the first neo or the first world ends with you uh this game is incredible really unique combat system with like buttons that you pick up and it's all about like fashion and whatnot and you, you make these crazy combos out of all these powers you can combine um and it's got a really crazy story like it's it's awesome to me i define neo the world ends with you as if like the craziness of kingdom hearts but actually with like a bit more focus um and it, feel, it feels a bit more refined so that game's way better than it had any right to be they invested way more into it and also the soundtrack fantastic um so that would be like my weird pick of course one of my favorite games of all time here in steelbook fashion persona 5 royal uh this is a must play in my opinion now it's available on all systems so you no longer have an excuse um shenmue one and two I remember playing this. My brother and I went to Lake George uh, on a golfing trip, and I brought my PS4 with me, and uh, I was grinding this one out. I, I adore the first Shenmue especially, so got to have that in the collection. Um, of course, this has been the era of remakes, so SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrate, another one that I, uh, I absolutely adore. Uh, that was one of those, I can't believe this is a real type announcement. Uh, otherwise, my collection shifts into... A lot of trails. If there's a JRPG I could put you onto right now, um, it is the Trail series. I am not gonna flip this steelbook because I kid you not, there are spoilers on this steelbook. Um, but yeah, this is Trails of Cold Steel too. But the entire Trail series, I have a lot of love for. Actually down here at the bottom, I have my sealed uh, collector's editions of uh, Trails into Azure. Um, we also have over here, uh, Trails into Reverie, uh, one of my top games of this year top five actually i think it slotted in at number four when i made my list so yeah i got a lot of love for trails one of the most criminally under discussed jrpg series uh of all time uh it's paving the way like if you think that the the combat for example in this new upcoming persona like game metaphor refantasio looks really good uh let's just say trails was doing that first so trails is like a trailblazer literally to me and so yeah do not sleep on the trails franchise but i have them all here on playstation um we have even this uh collector's edition here the relentless edition like trails is one of those things that uh, it's it's tucked away in every single shelf of mine check that out like it's just it's hidden away everywhere uh, i played nine of these games in a single year like it's that good all the way from sky to cold steel 4 so absolutely a worthwhile adventure but yeah my ps5 collections down below here um don't have too much for it right now like there's the ego pick here like this one odd world soul storm uh just shameless plug i am a voice actor in this game uh, i am one of the many sligs that you'll encounter um you'll hear my little voiceover but i've been told you can't even tell it's me which is the job of a voice actor so you're welcome for continuing that immersion this is a terrible tragedy I only hope my moolah, which I'm definitely donating, can go towards those grieving friends and families who definitely exist. Uh, yeah, Oddworld Soulstorm, in all seriousness, I know I'm biased, but like, I love the Oddworld series. I grew up on it. Munch's Odyssey, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and so to be a part of this, really, really cool. Um, so yeah, Oddworld Soulstorm, of course, in my collection here. A lot of JRPGs that were on sale at GameStop. We have Star Ocean Divine Force. Uh, of course, the, the must-haves, like, you know, I have God of War here. Uh, this is one that we reviewed here on the channel this year, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. This game rules. If you like Jet Set Radio, but with combat, and like, this game's story is ridiculously good, too. Um, it will it will knock your socks off. Like, it's an excellent game. You know, what, what's happened here is, like, PS5 is kind of the exclusive machine. So 
that's kind of how it's ended up here. And then we can rotate to our final shelf here, which is going to be our Switch and GameCube and Game Boy stuff, like all Nintendo. Let's rotate it on over here. Um, the Switch collection, really big. I support physical Switch so much, strictly because um, this is one of the last bastions of, I think, like, the full game is there on the cartridge. Like, with PS5 and PS4, like, I, I have to admit, like, it's sometimes tough to justify collecting for those systems because as much as I want to, like, Xbox especially is guilty of this. Like, half the game is on the disc. Like, with Spider-Man 2 is in my collection because they, Insomniac put out a note and they're like, hey, the full game is on the disc. So, like, absolutely going to go out and buy that. But Switch is, like, to me, the last bastion of, like, your game is playable and it works and it's on the cart. It's all yours. Game is preserved. Um, so that's why I try to get as much as I can for the Switch, even if I despise the spines. Like, if you look at all of these shelves, all of these colors, right? All of these different designs that you can just read and identify. And then you get to the stinky switch here. What happened, man? What happened? Where did the where did the love and creativity go? It it blows my mind. It's all it's almost impossible for me. This is why I alphabetize my stuff, because it's like impossible for me to find just image-wise what I'm looking for. Um, so switch. This is a, a system that I buy for indies especially being one of those um i love slay the spire that being a game that you should try out if you like roguelikes but also card games i love card games so this is right up my alley uh and and so that that's one you should definitely pick up but when i sit there looking at switch games it's like can i see myself laying in bed playing this game that's the question i ask myself every time can i see myself laying in bed so naturally that draws me toward games like triangle strategy you know love the tactics love the turn-based style games things that kind of emit a bit more nostalgia right like i don't for example i have here uh, the witcher 3 wild hunt um not like a special pickup here or anything like anything like that but it's cool to have this on the go but now in a world of like steam deck and in a world with you know the rog ally like this hits a little less now it's it, and so i just don't rush to to play that i was talking about the world ends with you earlier um they ported the kind of mobile version and the ds version is way better if you could play that play that but um the world ends with you you can play the first one here on switch in the final remix um so that's one that you should pick up there's a a really underrated indie gem here uh that i adore in unsighted um this game is like Zelda and Hades kind of having a baby. Uh, the music is absurdly good. It was made by two developers. And when it came out, uh, they were really disappointed with their sales. And so like me as an indie developer myself, I was like, well, let me check this game out. And uh, it was on Game Pass too. And I fired up, I was like, this is incredible. So uh, if you have not played Unsighted, seriously, do not sleep on this game. It's dirt cheap. Um, Limited Run did a little collection for it uh, with Humble Bundle. And uh, it is it is really, really good. Like combat feels good. Music's fantastic. Exploration's good. Um, it really calls back to that old era of uh, JRPGs, action JRPGs. I think a lot of you who enjoy the Nintendo style title with like Japanese flair are really gonna like that. Otherwise, um, there's games that are, I, I would say from major publishers that I think it slept on like the uh, Live Alive or Live Alive, um, what's it called, uh, remake. Um, this only sold like 500,000 copies last we heard, but uh, it came to PlayStation, so maybe, maybe it sold more, uh, but this one, really special game and otherwise yeah i do pick up the the, the mainstays if you will your zeldas uh, we have here my, my probably favorite mario sports game uh, mario golf super rush i have bet a ton of money on this game in my friend group so that's one that i uh, i love to to throw towards people like what should we play i'm like let's play margo because i have to abbreviate everything uh but otherwise uh this is another game that uh for my Mega Man fans out there I'd recommend um, Gun Azure Striker Gunvolt. Uh, this is the Striker Pack. Uh, this comes from, I've got to make sure I get the developer's name right, Any Creates. Um, you may recognize that name because we've talked about one time on the channel, um, Mega Man Zero. Um, so the Mega Man Zero developers are still around and they're still making Mega Man style games. I've only played a couple of hours of the first one. Combat feels really good, great rhythm. Um, so definitely don't sleep on this if you like Mega Man games. I, I really enjoyed my time with it. I picked it up um, this past PAX. But otherwise, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a lot of indies. We got another one here, uh, Ender Lilies. 
uh, quietest of the night. Um, this is kind of souls like almost, uh, reminds me of, was it salt sanctuary or something like that? It's like 2d souls like, but, um, this game is also fantastic. Very artsy, surprisingly good story. Uh, so yeah, I love my switch for my indies. Uh, that's usually my like go-to or, uh, ports that I have really intimate connections with. Uh, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, we just talked about that on the channels at the time of posting this at least, and uh, you know how much I love Dragon's Dogma. So it can kind of reinvigorate some games in the collection. Um, there are ones like Disco Elysium Final Cut. I held out on this one until it came to Switch because for me, um, you know, like this is a game I don't want to play. When it first came out, it was PC only. I'm like, I don't want to be hunched over on my PC playing this kind of game. Like I want to put it on, play it on Switch. Then it comes out on Switch and uh, so many things to review that like I bought it. I was like, I can't wait to play this. Still haven't played it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm doing a great job out here. But yeah, my Switch collection, pretty stacked. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. But uh, we get down to the GameCube section here. Um, again, pretty picky here. I say that as I'm looking at this copy of the God awful Batman Dark Tomorrow, but you know, to appreciate the gold in your collection, you gotta have a couple stinkers. And so, um, Batman Dark Tomorrow is actually a surprisingly kind of pricey game. So I'm like, okay, fine. Like I'll, I'll keep it. But, uh, again, this is one I'm very picky about. So, um, especially because of how expensive things are. So a lot of like big bombs here, uh, Pokemon Coliseum being one love gen three. So had to get this one. We uh, played that for the first time on the channel last year before Scarlet and Violet came out. Gale of Darkness have yet to play this. So we'll be sitting on this one until it's a good time to play it, but very excited about that. We have uh, Code Veronica. I just hear so many people talking about it. I was at my local game shop and I saw it there. Beautiful condition. I was like, all right, why not? So picked it on up. Uh, but if I can make a recommendation here, uh, there's quite a few. Scooby-Doo Night of 100 fight Frights. Not kidding. Actually go to 3D platformer. I hope that THQ actually remakes this one day because like, I think it's so good. The, the Scooby-Doo games, like there was one on, um, on the DS that I don't have anymore, but uh, that game was incredible. Like Scooby-Doo has some pretty good games. Just don't play Cyber Chase on Game Boy Advance. That one as a kid haunted me. Uh, Disney extreme skate adventure you like tony hawk uh it's you like disney it's literally built on the tony hawk engine with like disney characters so you could like skateboard around like tarzan world and whatnot or in andy's bedroom it's sick man so uh, of course we have a lot of sonic love down here uh thanks to my fiance uh, she owns both these games so i was able to throw these in the collection uh cannot claim these as my own uh, and then if i were to make other recommendations here definitely what i would consider one of the under discussed first party nintendo games on switch Star Fox assault I, this game is so good. Like I'm not a big Star Fox guy, but that mixture of like third person gunplay and the ship gunplay, like uh, is so much fun. Um, we also have here Star Fox Adventures. Um, this is by Rare. It's a 3D platformer, but you play as Star Fox. Like I, I just love these weirder kind of games as you may have already recognized here. Like I like to go in for the deeper cuts. Uh, beneath that though, is my Game Boy Advance collection. I have, and then next to that is Trails for Zero, from Zero, uh, which is one of my favorite JRPGs ever. I have slowed down a bit on Game Boy Advance because anytime I get Game Boy Advance, like you'll see here, let me pull out Booze Fury, um, which is a game we've talked about on this channel here, like the, uh, see, it's like acrylic. Um, I like to protect these games to the best of my ability because I buy like premium because like I have a lot of love for the GBA, um, but you can't just stack these on your shelf side by side. So all these for the most part are sleeved in some way shape or form um but i like to get the acrylics but they're expensive so it's like i'm not just buying the game i'm buying probably one of the more expensive versions online because if it's in good condition you'll charge like 50 dollars more then it's another like 25 for like the acrylic case so i try to be really picky about it there are certain games that i think the best version of the uh the many re-releases are on game boy advance like final fantasy 6 advance um that i think the best way to play it is on game boy advance if you can now with a uh, pixel remaster maybe hold back on it but uh, i have all of battle network here you'll see um so this is one through three or this is two three and four but oh battle network one is across my room here um Again, one of those things where it's like, do I need to own these? I owned them before Legacy Collection came out. Not anymore, but I'm gonna keep them because I adore Battle Network. So yeah, that is literally everything here on this rotating shelf here. We still got one more to go through, but uh, quite a few games here, and hopefully you found something so far that you may wanna pick up.
We're here in the opposite corner of the room now, and we have another rotating shelf, although this one has a lot more room to grow, as you'll see here, um, especially here in the handheld section, which we'll get to. Um, and then you'll see here, I've even gotten a little creative and used like a little picture in between to fill in some of the gaps. But yeah, it's not as stacked over here, um, but this is really like the Xbox and handheld section of the collection. So let's get started with the 360, shall we? Probably my favorite modern system of all time. I, I have so many memories baked into this system. So naturally it's one of my biggest next to the PS2. As you can see, there's a consistency with nostalgia and where I shop. Um, in the terms of recommendations, JRPGs, of course, you know I'm full of them. Uh, this is another Mistwalker JRPG, back when Xbox used to do exclusive JRPGs. Uh, Blue Dragon has the Akira Toriyama art style, like what you'd see in Dragon Quest, or more popular is Dragon Ball. Um, so you'll find that here in Blue Dragon. Not the best JRPG that's been put out, but like it's to me cool because it's a Xbox exclusive. Another one that I talked about earlier in this video that to me is a must own is uh, right here, Lost Odyssey. Uh, if you're going to buy any game from this 360 collection, let it be this one. Uh, this is one of my favorite JRPGs ever. The way they handle uh, immortality and the passage of time. Um, it's an emotional game, but it's also just like so incredibly well thought out. It's basically the Final Fantasy 13 for many people that they never got because uh, many people hate Final Fantasy 13, but uh, not me, that's for sure. Uh, Final Fantasy 13 to me is like the must own on Xbox 360 um, if you're gonna buy it at all because of back compat, how they've upscaled it, uh, the load times are better, it just runs better. Like if you're gonna play Final Fantasy 13 as a trilogy, get it on 360 uh, and don't sleep on it. 13 2, straight up one of the best Final Fantasy games in my opinion. And that soundtrack, I don't care how much you hate Final Fantasy 13, put some respect on that soundtrack, all right? So yeah, got a lot of love for 13. Ton more Harry Potter games, of course. Um, another random JRPG, Infinite Undiscovery. This was also exclusive on the Xbox 360. This is why a lot of Xbox fans are like pushing Xbox to get back into Japan because they used to do cool exclusives like this. This was kind of Xbox's answer to uh, the, the Tales of series in a way, and it's by Square Enix who for a while neglected the Xbox platform, but here you have a great game here. Um, just a really underrated RPG, in my opinion. Uh, Kingdom Under Fire was another original Xbox series that actually got a sequel exclusive to the 360 called Kingdom Under Fire Circle of Doom. Uh, this is a game that has like a crossover between like, I think RTS and action RPG elements. That's why I love the 360, man. Like there's just so many hidden exclusives. You gotta remember, this was like the creme de la creme for most of the generation before PS3 caught up and it was kind of 50-50 by the end. 360 was killing it for the most part, and so they were getting a lot of the unique exclusive deals. Uh, one game that I am so happy to own is this one here, a rare platinum hit for Retro Rebound. Uh, this is Marvel Ultimate Alliance Special Edition. Um, it has all the DLC on disc, so what you get is like uh, Venom and all the extra heroes, all the extra missions they come with, all the extra comic book missions, like those stuff. Uh, that's all here on this disc. So uh, this is one of my favorite action RPGs. I, I still think it's the best in the entire trilogy so you definitely want to pick that one up if you can for your 360 because it was on ps4 and xbox one like they they ported these games but the ports weren't that great and so um and now they're delisted because of the marvel licensing with activision going away so uh spider-man games are really expensive uh, we got so many other ones here to go through the naruto games on 360 are also extremely underrated here we have uh rise of a ninja as well as broken bond um these games here are so good uh, especially the use of the jutsu hand signs i i used to imitate those as a kid all the time so to have a naruto game that's like totally built around the idea of like the hand signs and exploration and rpg systems and like also fighting like standard ninjas it just went a really long way with me that's why i loved uzumaki chronicles uh, as well um you're also gonna find here in this collection another underrated one uh, actually i shouldn't say underrated this one gets a lot of love but i feel like when we talk metal gear we don't talk enough about metal gear rising revengeance uh the main reason i like metal gear is because of raiden uh metal gear solid 2 being my favorite of the entire metal gear solid series so if you like platinum games and you love raiden like you're gonna adore metal gear rising um and i wish we got more games like that 
nowadays. Uh, we have some stinkers in here. <laughs> we have uh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. I remember a couple buddies and I went to GameStop and we, we picked that one up. Like, okay, why not? Like, we're just looking for the newest co-op game. Holy smokes, what a mistake. That game is awful. One day we'll play it here on the channel because we like to play awful games. Uh, like I said, a lot of Spider-Man here, like we have Web of Shadows. We've talked about this individually on the channel. Uh, most Spider-Man games we have talked individually about on the channel. Uh, there is this one here, which we haven't done an individual video on, Friend or Foe. Um, it's got like cool comic book representation, like Prowler is one of your first companions in the game, which now we know who Prowler is on a more mainstream level, thanks to um, the, the Spider-Verse movies and Miles Morales. Uh, but but now like you really get uh, a, a real appreciation for this game because it starts you off with like a, a lesser known comic book here, which was kind of bold back then. Uh, otherwise, one a couple tie-ins that I want to recommend here to you all. Uh, Wolverine um, Origins or X-Men Origins Wolverine, sorry. This game is cracked, dude. Like, you will cut dudes in half. It is one of the goriest superhero games ever. Play it. You will not regret it. You'll you'll put dudes' heads up into helicopter blades. Like, it's it's messed up. And then the, the best tie-in video game of all time. Uh, this is not a meme, might I add. This is dead serious. Um, Toy Story 3. You will love this game they have an open world toy box mode where as you progress you're going to unlock more toys more buildings more jobs it's like a city builder in a toy story game and they have like a great story mode i, I am promising you this is a trust me moment buy toy story 3 it is literally one of the best games ever made like i i wish i was being facetious i wish i was being ironic and quirky and funny no like this is a really good game so yeah like i love my 360 collection i i, I just feel like i can always pull out something random here like el shaddai uh that's a that's just a really random one here i think this was originally exclusive to xbox so um there's just so many crazy ones the amped series had a lot of love for Amped uh, growing up, the original one on the uh, first Xbox. Uh, so having Amped 3 here, really cool. I wish that series that was still around. So yeah, just a lot of love for the 360 here. I realize now I probably should have started with the original Xbox and then built into the 360, but it's fine. We're, we're freestyling now. So let's rotate on over to a mix of modernity and as well as the original Xbox here. So up top is like Xbox One Series X. Below here is the original Xbox collection um i really only recently started collecting for my xbox one and xbox series consoles just because um so many of their games come out their game pass that i'll usually end up buying them digitally i won't lie um but a lot of these games are pretty recent uh, like lies of p uh, this is a game that if you have not played this oh my god uh, top two game of the year for me um if you miss bloodborne but you also want like a really good souls like story which has kind of never been done before uh lies of p is, is awesome in that way uh, i think when i was shopping for my xbox i have to get the exclusives and that's why the collection's a little thin here because they're doing it now but you get games like halo master chief collection like i'm happy to have this in my collection this has been installed on my Xbox since I first got my Series X and when I got my got it on my Xbox one it never got uninstalled there so yeah like this is one of those must-haves in the collection um, and then there's other fun ones here like New Vegas Ultimate Edition with the weird 360 Xbox one top I hate this case uh, of course collecting on Xbox one you know it kind of like I just don't like the cases but I, I like how the spines look so I try to separate the two, um, but there are great exclusives on Xbox One that are just not appreciated enough. Um, here we have Sunset Overdrive. I hope they port this. I hope they let it come to PS5, honestly, because like while I get Xbox is protecting their exclusives, like this is one that more people need to experience because all of the building blocks for uh, Spider-Man PS4 are like in this game, but no one played it enough to, to recognize that. So you got that here. Uh, this is something that we call on Defining Duke, my Xbox podcast, uh, the best 900p game of all time, Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, this game, look, I know it's a lot of QTEs and I, I hear you, but Rise, Son of Rome is a good time. And like, I, the story is pretty thrilling. Like, I, I dug it. Like, I really enjoyed that game a lot. Uh, another one here. This is multi-plat, but it's from an Xbox first-party studio, Wasteland 3. Uh, if you like Baldur's Gate 3 this year, or if you enjoy literally the most spider-webbing of choice and consequence, or you're a Fallout fan, uh, this is a co-op game, by the way, too, so you can play it online with a friend, but don't sleep on Wasteland 3 like so many people did in, uh, I think it was 2020 when it came out. 
But yeah, the, the Xbox One collection, like I'm trying to get more JRPGs in it. We have Crisis Core here. Um, you know, I had to rep because I, I've been pushing for a while that Xbox gets back into their JRPG roots, but not a ton here in the terms of, of new games. We, uh, we picked up Midnight Suns as well. So a lot of new stuff here. Like you're gonna notice a lot of more modern things. Um, I picked up here, uh, this is the Ultimate Ninja Storm Legacy Collection. We showed this off during our Ultimate Ninja Storm uh, Connections video. Um, this is the best way to play Naruto, Ultimate Ninja Storm. It's got one through four. The trilogy's on one disc, the fourth game is on the other. So that's a good way to play it all. But otherwise, what I really wanna highlight here is I, I could sit here all day and just talk about the original Xbox. I mean, every single game on this shelf, I think is worth owning. Uh, the Blink series, Blink's the Time Sweeper, we actually did a dedicated video on, um, the, it, it calls itself the first 4D action game ever, which is pretty awesome. Um, and the way it plays with time and, and Xbox actually having like a cool 3D platform and mascot, like I just, love blinks the time sweeper sweeper one of my favorite uh discoveries on a demo disc like the xbox to me the original xbox was defined by that demo disc um speaking of which death row uh, this is my original copy i got from gamestop i don't know why my parents let me get this game but i'm so happy they did you are flipping people off you're beating the life out of them it's a sports game but it's also a fighting game one of the biggest missed opportunities not keeping this series alive. There should have been a Death Row 2, 3, 4, 5. We should still be having Death Row games. They should have made a live service game out of it that you could play right now. Like Death Row is a game that would work so well in today's audience. It's crude, it's reckless, it's fun to play, especially with more modern cam mechanics and camera control. I think it would go a long way with people. But yeah, this is a great game. Unfortunately, not back compat on modern Xbox systems, but if you have a 360, uh, that's the best place to play it via back compat so death row is a game i adore and it's really cheap by the way so you you should definitely add it to your collection uh if you can of course home of bioware jade empire another really slept on uh bioware rpg they actually made their own language for this game uh which to me is just an incredible level of effort they're all limited edition by the way so if you're ever like hunting this down it's really hard to find like a jade empire copy that's not limited edition uh, but they have, it's like, it's where Bioware first started to experiment with being action RPGs before you really saw the commitment in the likes of Mass Effect and Dragon Age 2. Uh, but Jade Empire was the best hybrid of it all. No real sacrifice of storytelling at all. Some really dark choices, multiple endings, as I'm sure you'd love with the original Bioware. So yeah, Jade Empire is phenomenal. A lot of love for the James Bond games. So uh, we got here, which one is this? This is Agent Under Fire here. And as you can see, five bucks, really cheap. Um, so many 007 games in my collection now. Uh, this one I remember playing on the original Xbox, so I got it here. Uh, we have, I talked a little bit about Oddworld earlier. Uh, Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. This was a launch game uh, for the original Xbox. And I actually spoke to Lauren Lanning about this game, who's like the creator of the Oddworld series. And I thanked him. I said, like, this game is amazing. Uh, I have great memories playing it with my dad. And I love it so much. Like, thank you for, for making it. And he was like, oh, I hate that game. I don't know if he feels the same now. Uh, but yeah, like I told him, I was like, dude, you made a phenomenal game. And it's just because like game development's tough and like there were rough memories accompanied with that. But like, I remember talking to him about this and he was like, yeah, this was a horrible game to make. Like EA almost killed us over this game. Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting story behind it, but I'm thankful it exists nonetheless. And it's one of those games I want to get in HD on like my PS Vita or like my PS3, something along those lines. Um, we also have like the, the packaged in games. Like you have the, the bonus games here with the uh, Clone Wars and then Tetris Worlds on the other side. I remember this was the only game I had for a while and I, I played a lot of Tetris. I'm not so good at Tetris now, but I, I got good at it as a kid. Uh, the best place to play the OG Star Wars Battlefront games is on Xbox. Um, they added new maps, and I, I think it was Battlefront 2, uh, New Heroes. So you can actually play those if you play, uh, experience them if you play them on Xbox, Xbox 360, or Xbox One. Like, definitely play them there um, because you can get more content that way. Yeah, Xbox is like my Star Wars system. You're gonna see here a a gluttonous stack of Star Wars games. Republic Commando, must play first person shooter. Obi-Wan, kind of underrated. KOTOR, my favorite game of all time. Uh, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, really underrated game with some of the best lightsaber combat in a Star Wars game. So yeah, like my original Xbox collection, it just, I love it so much. So many memories packed into every single game here. So like, I, that's why like I have so many memories built here and then it carries on into the 360 where the collection grew even further.
the last two sections are pretty easy to bang out because it's all handheld related. Like we have the PS Vita and the PSP here. Um, man, like I, where would I be without my handheld gaming? As I talked about a, a smidge when it came to uh, the Game Boy Advance. Uh, up top here is the PS Vita, which uh, just to me is like the last bastion of true handheld gaming. I mean, that was where so many great exclusives were there. You just had to look for them. And if you were a JRPG fan, which I think I've shown I am just uh, so many great ones here kind of a tough sell now because like for example games like Danganronpa we got all four Danganronpa games here um it's a tough sell now because all of these have been ported to PlayStation and like I own those physically uh games like Child of Light it kind of goes down to now the this the the factor of the switch right where i say like what can you see yourself playing in bed uh, so like child of light is a great game that was on 360 but like now i get to play it in bed and collect trophies while i'm in bed like it's all about the trophy hunting limited run games has done some great things for it as well i have a sealed copy of bastion here uh which comes from super giant they've made no bad games it's crazy like they've made no bad games they made pyre they made hades they've made no bad games transistor is one of my favorite games like they've made no bad games. So just to have that in the collection is great. Um, but there are certain titles that I think are best on Vita. I think the Metal Gear games, like 2 and 3, here are, are just fantastic on Vita. So, uh, yeah, when you combine that with a little bit of trophy hunting, it goes a long way. Uh, there are games that are not optimal at all for the Vita, like Amazing Spider-Man 1, that you just look at you're like, it's cool that you exist here. Like, I'm going to allow the choppy frame rate and crummy visuals. It's it's cool that you're here. Um, there's ones that are forgotten about. Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Uh, I sometimes forget this game even exists. 55 playable characters, though. Um, I, I would love to see that series come back. Um, there's also jrpgs that are kind of stuck here tales of hearts are uh th this game i remember loving the first 10 hours i beat it but like the first 10 hours of tales of hearts are are really good and then it kind of cools off a bit um this is where i played a great visual novel here in zero escape virtues last reward if you want to talk about a mind screwy adventure here this is it man go, go out there and play they also have the nonary games here on uh on vita too so you have the whole collection there um, yeah, it's it's a tough sell nowadays, but, but my goal is to I don't do like full collections for any system But for the Vita I do plan on doing a shout out to uh, my good friend Colin Moriarty He actually has a game that he put out on Vita here in Twin Breaker um, So got that physical of course gotta support your man, right? Um, so yeah, the Vita is a bit of a tough sell nowadays The PSP a bit of an even tougher sell now because of the way it controls like at least you have the dual analog sticks on the Vita, but you go down to the the PSP so many great games here right this was where you would get a PS2 game and then they'd make the mobile experience for it so like we got to pull out Dragon Ball of course like Tenkaichi tag team here you got Shin Budokai Shin Budokai another road like you got to take the Budokai or Tenkaichi experience on the go so like that went a really long way with me that's why those are in the collection but Crisis Core for example like we have Crisis Core here and now it's like, well, do I really need this in my collection now? Because I'm always going to go play it on my Xbox because I have it on Xbox One. Like, that's where I'm going to want to play it there more than anything. Um, there are fantastic ones here, though. Uh, really slept on games here. This one isn't exclusive, but I always think of the PSP with it. Uh, Justice League Heroes. We also have here Jean d'Arc. I know nothing about this game, but I saw the Square Enix tag or the Sony tag, I think. Is this Square Enix? No, this is just a Sony exclusive, but... It looked cool. That was definitely one of those like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna waste a little money here type of purchases. Uh, GTA Liberty City Stories back when Rockstar actually released more than one game every like half a decade. Uh, it's cool to have that in the collection. You'd get really unique spin-off titles as well here. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Again, Square Enix ports this one. It's like, do I like do I really need to have this? Of course, for nostalgia's sake, but like I'm never gonna play it on my PSP anymore. Uh Kill Zone Liberation, though, it's like one of those games that's stranded on the PSP. So, like, okay, why not? Right? Like, so it's good to have those in the collection. Uh to celebrate Falcom. Um, or I think did Falcom work on this? They did. Uh The Legend of Heroes. So you have like the original one here, a tier of Vermilion. Um, so yeah, just so many great games on PSP. I do not have the hand-eye coordination to stack them right now, so we'll just put those there. Uh, otherwise, expensive system to collect for in some cases here. Uh, we have down here uh, Persona 1 and Persona 3 Portable. Uh, you can actually see the price tag for Persona 1, 150 bucks used. 
uh, ridiculous. And, and honestly, Persona 1 isn't even that great, but I want to collect all of the Persona games as well. So I'm on my way to doing that. Uh, Persona 3 Portable was also like a $150 plus dollar game. So yeah, pretty expensive ones there. And otherwise, if I could make one other call out for a, uh, a series on the Vita, or I'm sorry, on the PSP, that should be the Untold Legends series. I swear growing up, I played every action RPG series except Diablo. Uh, so I played Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. I played Untold Legends, The Warrior's Code, Untold Legends, Brotherhood of the Blade, addicted to these games. Like this, this was my car game, grinded these games so, so much. They have the Battlefront games on PSP. So like the PSP has a phenomenal library whereas we move on to our last shelf of the entire video here it's the nintendo ds and the nintendo 3ds uh ds is actually one i prefer to collect for 3ds uh, it's kind of like what i talk about with the wii right like there's just not many games in the 3ds library i connected with on a strong level but the ds library was like an evolved game boy advance so oh boy did i connect with this one but they're very expensive so i'm picky with it like i think again back to the best versions of certain games that you can pick up on the system uh chrono trigger best version here on D ds um there are fun ones to get uh like dragon ball z Haro Kanaru Densetsu, which is like a Dragon Ball card game on the DS. Uh, this is surprisingly cheap too, like only 20 bucks. Um, then there's really unique, uh, again, hand-eye coordination not working today, really unique turn-based RPGs. We talked about this one in a separate video, uh, Attack of the Saiyans. So this game is phenomenal. Uh, then I talked about my love of Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, there is the entire Star Force series here. Um, so instead of the, the battlefield being like horizontal, it's vertical. Um, and it's it's about like stars and planets and whatnot. So like, I just love that era of Mega Man spinoffs. Um, that always jived with me and as a Mega Man fan growing up like I was one of the people who wasn't complaining and wasn't getting fatigued when they were dropping a million one Mega Man games uh, we have a bajillion Pokemon games from uh, Pokemon Black which I don't know when this video is going out as we recorded but like we are gonna have a video on this very soon I love this game like I love the story for it so there's the obvious mainline pickups there's the less obvious pickups like uh, a really cool tactical game in Pokemon Conquest, which focuses on Nobunaga's ambition. And then really weird ones like Pokemon Dash, <laughs> just like a Pokemon racing game. Why not? And then you get into the, the neglected ones like uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. So you know me, like I, I am a, a spinoff guy. Love myself a good spinoff here. And there's one that uh, my lovely fiance got me, which uh, this is one of my favorite games ever. Uh, Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, this is one of the best beat em up side scrollers ever, in my opinion. Uh, just the deflections and the combat, so, so good. So yeah, just a lot of love for the DS library. And for the 3DS library, it's tough to make a suggestion that's unique here outside of a couple that I got for you. Uh, one is Dragon Ball Fusions. I know, uh, is Matty a Dragon Ball fan? He might be. Uh, yeah, so this is a really cool game where it's like Dragon Ball meets Pokemon, where instead of capturing monsters, you fuse characters together to make new fusions. Like, you know, you'd be like Gogeta, for example. So now you can like fuse characters together and make even crazier fusions. Think of it, they can fuse together. So yeah, that's like your way of collecting monsters if you will. There's also this one, uh, Seventh Dragon Code VFD. Um, th this game is, is wild. I love the art direction for it though uh and it's got a little bit of like side quests and like it says it can go on dates here on the back of the box so it's got some persona elements so i thought it was kind of interesting um the artist i'm working on my video game with actually recommended to me so i had to pick it up because it looked really cool otherwise a lot of pokemon here uh got a lot of love for the smt series now thanks to smt5 so we have four which we actually showed off individually on the channel we also have Devil Survivor Overclocked. Uh, I've just developed a lot of love for SMT thanks to SMT5. Um, SMT4 I wasn't too crazy about. We also have Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask. Uh, this game is, is pretty awesome and I think a little bit slept on as a series, but they're having a new entry coming out. Uh, the Fire Emblem games are fantastic here. My favorite Fire Emblem being Awakening and it's here on 3DS. So that's one of my favorite games on the system. But yeah, like a lot of mainline love, like the Zelda games, the Pokemon games, surprise, surprise, not too many hidden gems quite like my DS collection. So. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. From top to bottom, you've seen everything within my gaming collection. And I hope out of all of the things I've shown you here from the B-roll of the scrolling through the shelves, all the way to like 
personal recommendations of games I really love. I hope you found something that like really sparked your interest. And if you did, like, let me know down below. I'm curious if there's anything you're gonna be picking up from this video. Um, and I'd be excited to see if I inspired you all to do a little bit of collecting. So hopefully you enjoyed my game collection. Maybe one day we'll do like a little set tour here and you can see all that's happening with Retro Rebound. But that's it for me. I appreciate you tuning into what is a very long video, but uh, so many requests. I wanted to make sure I delivered with the details. So take great care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.